Hey, I'm Jo from Jo Jumper, and welcome to part three of our Toppler Tips series. Today, we're gonna to be diving into the science of a meltdown. Number one, what is going on in my child's brain and body during this meltdown? Why is it happening? And number two, how can I help? Or the real question, can I help? <laughs> well, the answer is yes, you can, and I'm excited to share with you what I've learned through this. So, what's happening in my child's brain and body during a meltdown. Why are we screaming? Why won't they listen? What is going on? The word we use is dysregulation. And all that means is your brain, your body, your emotions are just out of whack. Something is not connecting. The dots are not connecting. And you know, really as toddlers, they don't really have the language to tell you something's wrong and I, I don't even know what it is, but something is wrong. I mean, think about it, as adults, we even have this. We, you, we have off days, I'm having an off day, or I'm just in a mood, you know? <laughs> like, so take that down to a micro scale for your toddler, right? They, they can't even say, I'm in a mood, something's wrong, <laughs> you know? And so what happens is they get out of whack, it compounds, and what we see is an eruption. The eruption is just the physical manifestation of what's going on internally. So honestly, I think just understanding that is really, really helpful. I mean, really, it's half the problem because once you know the problem, then you can solve it. So they're dysregulated, they're out of whack, they're trying, they're, that's why they kind of, they probably throw themselves on the floor because their body is serious, literally erupting. They are trying to get an emotion out, they're trying to express to you what's going on, but they don't have the language to do it. So what can you do during a full on tantrum? Well, number one is you can limit talking. So especially if they're screaming or crying, it's just a lot of auditory, it's just a lot of sound. Now, if you start talking over that, even if, of course, if it's gentle, like, hey, it's okay, hey, okay, all right, sh you know, it's just honestly more sound. And they're not actually processing what you're saying, it's just more sound. So I don't know if you've noticed this, but if your kid is tantruming, crying, screaming, and you start talking, does their screaming get louder, <laughs> right? That's, that's why, because they, it's just like, I can't, I cannot listen to you right now, right? They're just trying to express what's going on. So number one, limit talking, or try not to talk at all if you can. And number two is to increase physical touch. Because, you know, the science says that social interaction is so key to, to humans, right? We feel connected when we can touch each other and we can hug and kiss and hold hands, you know, like you get that connection. And that's really what your toddler desperately needs, that connection. Because you can communicate, I'm right here, you're safe, everything's gonna be okay, without ever saying a word. Now, some kids prefer different pressures. And what I mean by that is there are, you know, there's different pressures on your skin. Some are light touches, right? Now, some kids really like that, that light touch or the light playing of the hair, just very light touches. And some kids really prefer that those squeezes, right? The hugs that squeeze, or even they, when they hug you, they squeeze really hard, right? Because they like the firm pressure, they like a deep pressure. Think like a deep tissue massage, right? They love that firm pressure. So you figuring out before a tantrum, what kind of pressure your child prefers will really help you because that can become a tool in the tantrum. So we're gonna limit talking, number one, and then number two, you're gonna increase physical contact, whether that's light caresses on the back or if that's a, a nice squeeze. You know, and not even just hugging, but think about squeezing on the shoulders. This is a great place. Squeezing up and down the arms or if they're laying down, you know, like even squeezing along the legs, giving that deep pressure or even light pressure, just kind of lightly just giving them an extra um, stimulus versus an auditory stimulus all the time. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any success stories with uh, walking your child through a tantrum, feel free to drop them in the comments below because I'm sure it would help out our community of parents. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.